here. Harold Hillman is an executive coach from the Sigmoid Curve Consulting Group with us here on the Sunday Cafe. Resilience, it's a word that's banded around like, you know, mindfulness really. What is resilience? The uh, Probably the most basic definition, the one that people most often think about is the ability to bounce back from adversity. And it's, a, it's, an, it's an important to really focus on it. We, here we are, we've a quarter of the way through the year now, and I'm already dealing with clients who are tired yeah. and exhausted. And so it really is important to really think about it in a proactive sense about energy and focus because the, the, I'm old enough to remember when you left work and you went home mm-hmm. and there was no work at home. But now those lines are blurred. And so there's just a, you really do need to be purposeful and proactive about your resilience and Mm -hmm. the ability to sort of keep yourself energized. I think about it in terms of um, are you mostly fueled or are you mostly drained? Yeah. And um, and, and to really think about um, plugging yourself into things that energize you a bit more in a proactive way. Whose fault is it that those lines have been blurred between end of work, going home, my laptop sits on the dining table? How yeah. sad is that? You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's the, it, it is the reality for us now in terms of technology, our laptops, our phones. Um, people have immediate, constant access to us. Mm. Um, a lot of times when we're at home, we're not present. We're not mindful. To your, um, to your point, mindful it, my, being mindful means being present. And sometimes we may be sitting around our family members, but we are focused on, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we are focused on um, work. Yeah. And it just makes it hard sometimes to let go. And yeah. it really can be very draining. Oh, it's horrible. Grab yourself a drink. Don't knock it over. I will not knock Don't it knock over. It. <laughs> I, prom- I promise. <laughs> All right. We are talking about resilience with Harold Hillman here from the Sigmoid Curve Consulting Group. Is resilience a mental thing, a physical thing? Is it a combination of both? It's a, combi- it's a combination of both. Um, we really started to look at resilience, researchers did, back in the mid-70s. Uh, a, st- a study in Kaui, Hawaii, of kids who were being raised by parents with mental or addictive disorders. Mm. And so there was a study done to see, um, for those kids who did make it out, and succeeded well, what was the, what was sort of, what differentiated them from kids who didn't? And there was this whole mental thing, Mm. this whole perspective thing, which made a a huge difference. And so there's a physical component to resilience. We do need to get enough sleep. Um, The World World Health, Health Organization has deemed insomnia to be a global epidemic. Uh, now I'm not surprised. Yeah, so people surprised. are not getting enough sleep. And so uh, you, we require a bit more discipline mm-hmm. around some basic things like getting enough sleep, keeping phones and laptops out of the bedroom. Mm. Um, and, you know, and it also just that the ability to keep yourself just sort of nourished, um, uh, physical activity and those types of things is important. But a big component of it, Romain, Romain is the mental mm. component of resilience, which is there was a study done in um, at the Harvard Business Review in 2015, mm-hmm. an article um, by the title of What Resilience Means and Why It Matters. And the author pointed out three characteristics that really define a resilient person. Um, the first one was a staunch acceptance of reality. So these are people who, no matter what, you know, hits them in the face, they are able to just basically step back and go, it is what it is. Mm. Um, The second attribute is a deep belief anchored to strongly held values that life is meaningful. And so this is a, a, a resilient person typically can keep things in perspective and that bad things, things that we consider to be bad or adverse, actually do lead to richer perspective Mm. and wisdom in some cases. And then the third one is an uncanny ability to improvise. Yeah. And, and, and as you, as you can imagine in life, just the ability to get creative when you're faced with a scenario where you've, you know, got a bit of a setback, Mm -hmm. um, the ability to just, you know, take X and make it Y and make it work. 
Sounds like radio, you know, just <laughs> making things work on the fly. That's right. You yeah. are, you are, your, your role would be a perfect example of that Oof. on any given Sunday yeah. with um, any number of things that you don't anticipate across, I know. you know, a few hours and those types of things. Yeah. You, the ability to improvise, you would be masterful at that. I go home at midday and I <laughs> curl up in the fetal position and cry for hours. So resilience is often that, oh, harden up. That's wrong, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it is. Resilience is, is also, you know, getting a comfortable relationship with this thing called vulnerability, mm. which is if you're comfortable with vulnerability, it simply means that you accept that things will never unfold perfectly mm. in life, that there's always going to be things that just come at you and unravel in front of you. No one can actually, you know, predict a perfect day. So, uh, it's a it's a matter of of just it's really a mindset around the notion that um, if I accept that life is not perfect, mm. um, then I'm ready to deal with those things that just come along. How do you? We learn these things. We learn about re- resilience. We learn about mindfulness, and then we go back to a workplace that is filled with bullies, filled yeah. with expectations that require you to do sixty hours a week. How do you change that within yourself and become the change that others want to follow? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it does require a, I, I call it a discipline, mm. and it is about being purposeful and um, proactive. You really do need to um, r- really think about the whole person now in 2020 with respect to your psychological and your physical um, energy. And just keeping things in perspective is, um, is very important. So people who are grounded, they have certain values that are important to them. Mm. Those, it may, really makes a difference when you're pushing through hard times and those types of things. Um, I've used the word perspective a couple of times um, this morning. Perspective is being able to sort of lift your head up, look at the broader picture, and take a particular situation in a broader context, mm. that it's not the end of the world, that this is a scenario that, in fact, um, you might think of it as an obstacle, mm. but it actually may be an opportunity. Mm. So sometimes it's just a matter of perspective and keeping yourself whole, keeping yourself real. Mm. I really like what you're talking about because we need this to start at a young age, don't we? It needs to we start really young so it becomes the norm. I'm really pleased to, to, um, to learn that um, in schools, you know, kids are learn- now learning about resilience. Mm-hmm. Kids are learning about mindfulness. Um, it's really an important thing. It's, it's really important because, again, of a lot of distractions around us, that whole notion of being present and being mindful is an important component of resilience. Mm, okay. So just quickly, we haven't got much more time, but I'm really keen to be able to tell people where they can go here in New Zealand to learn more about resilience. I've been really impressed with Sven Hansen. He runs the Resilience Institute, and I've had an opportunity to see him speak and um, uh, teach on a couple of occasions. And They train individuals and organizations to be resilient through workshops, keynotes, online training, and those types of things. Mm. There are a couple of other organizations. One is called Foresight, one is called Umbrella, and one is called Bright Star. And these are all organizations that really help people develop individual resilience plans around their own health and wellness. Yeah, brilliant. All right. I love it. I love it. We can always change. We can always get better in what we do and help ourselves to survive longer, literally, full stop, and longer in in work as well. If you'd like to find out more, do contact Harold Hillman, Executive Coach, the Sigmoid Curve Consulting Group, which can be found at www.sigmoidcurve.com. Brilliant. Well done.